dear future i'm really happy to tell you this story the story of a woman who changed my life the woman who gave herself for me i'm not talking about my biological mother i'm talking about a different woman who gave life to this young creature here that you see this young boy here i was on the street that time before i met this woman i was struggling on the street i was this street kid homeless person with no vision with no future with nothing even what i have now for my videos what i have now for my photography i didn't have that my education i didn't have that i was nothing at all i was this small boy in the street just roaming around looking for life rejected lost love because when my mom died is like every person cut themselves out of my life and that hurt me so much i went in the street but i was still a little a little boy a very young person very little boy and when i was on the street oh i went to see my other aunt i you know my aunts were living in there in the town it is called kakamega kakamega town so i was there looking for my people my relatives who can help me a place where i can sleep or eat and all of them they distanced themselves from me and i didn't know why what was the fear about why did they distance themselves i i asked those question for many years along down there when i was growing up when i was when before that be, after that before that too much changed my life and gave me an opportunity i was this hopeless young kid and one night i was i used to sleep in if it's not in a toilet i used to sleep there's a toilet in uh, in every town and at night they don't close them so i used to take a sack which is called gunia a sack a bag sack maize bag you know the maize bag i used to take those bags i go cover the toilet and one remainder i cover it myself like my blanket at night and that thing pained me because i i could have been sleeping here and in just 20 meters my relatives lives in 20 meters and they cannot do anything they cannot even help me out of that situation i was so bitter bitter and bitter towards all my relatives i didn't want anyone to be associated with me when i was growing up because they rejected me they didn't want me and that thing really destroyed me so much but one time Apart from the toilet I used to sleep in a church under the altar where the pastor used to stand on the altar and preach down there I used to sleep there down with my sack down there only the person who used to know me used to see me early in the morning is the person who used to come and wash the church every Sunday he will I will hear him sweeping I will just jump out of the church and boom outside because the church was a tent tent like and that really touched my life that really changed my life because sleeping at the church sleeping at those places helped me a lot i wasn't in glue i wasn't in any drugs i didn't use anything when i was in the street i was just just this clean clean boy young little clean boy so i didn't associate with even anyone on the street imagine almost for three years on the street or four years i don't know yeah and one day i was on the streets going to my aunt begging for a place to sleep because the church there was a there was this called kesha we call it night over sleep over sleep over the church like people come and preach at night full night it was on friday so i went to my aunt and she didn't even open a door for me yeah and i didn't know why and no one has ever explained that until now no one has ever explained that to me why did they never give me a chance why did they never 
even I can remember I went where my uncle lived he has been he was building an house the other side I was doing a house and finished house I went to his house where he he was building a mansion and he had another house so I went to knock at his door for him to give me an opportunity but he didn't give me an opportunity to sleep in the house he left me outside hey that was painful imagine your relative blood relative he threw me outside around at 2 at midnight and that is something that that scared me so much until today it has always scared me even if I ever have a family I don't know if I will ever introduce them to some of my relatives yeah because what I went through that time no one was there for me you know ready to give me a door or a place to sit to be to live it was so messy from all places so when I was there I went to this auntie of mine and when I went there she threw me outside in the middle of the night oh, I didn't tell you when my uncle threw me out I slept in that unfinished house do you know I use cement cement those cement you know those cements yeah those cement sucks after they have used the cement those sucks I, I wake I in the morning I wake up I was looking like the house that is finished like the foundation of the house I was so much with that from the the sack of the cement even if those cement never affected me thank god I really thank god for that you know I slept there all night so I went in the river wash myself went to town and continue with continue with the life how how did I survive in town alone man it was so hard I used to go to golf club, get some fire, fire, firewood, take to the hotel, and get something to eat. And sit around the hotels. Like if someone someone doesn't finish his food, he can bring me outside there and give it to me so that they can eat. And that was life then. That was life then. So when i went to this auntie and knock this time i wasn't feeling well something was wrong with me so i went to this auntie knock 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 and she didn't give me an opportunity she threw me outside and she said no you're not going to sleep in my house and you know what i slept in banana banks and that morning i remember when this woman walked in that banana and she changed my life she took me in she didn't come with me because her, her mom was dying. She had to remain. And she'd take all the risk from neglection and projection from relatives just to have me in her life. She took me. She gave me slippers. I remember I, came, I went to Nairobi with, to, alone in the bus with two different slippers. I had a blue and a red slippers. And I went to Tunza. Then I went to Kibera when she took me to Kibera. I came to Tunza Children's Home. That is when I joined Tunza Children's Home. I was so young. And but that did not stop me from dreaming now. Because I remember when I was in the street, I walk around a school around golf, around Kakamega. Around Kakamega Kakamega Primary School. There is a school there that is has Indian people go there to school. So I walk around there and I admire to go to school. When I was born in Tunze, I went to class. I didn't know any English. The only English I used to know was yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no. I knew Kiswahili, but English? I didn't know English. But Tunze changed my life. So Mama Tunze took me in. That is a special woman who changed my life. So there is always someone somewhere will always come in your life and change your life. This woman gave me a family. First of all, 
before she gave me an international family she gave me Tunza children's home that was located in Kibera that time <laughs> I'll tell you my story at Tunza the life that we used to live in Tunza at Kibera I'll give you all in another episode so when we were at Tunza at Tunza children's home uh, I started learning English little by little those these volunteers from NGOs around they used to come with come and visit the children's home when I came there so one of them spotted me in December 24th December you can remember they took all the children to M- Mamba village yeah I can remember everything when they took us to that member village this woman spotted me and this woman was Eva Weberg in 2005 yes 2005 she spotted me she started help me me started by like shoes I always I was so I was so I was so into football I wanted shoes for football because I never had any shoes and immediately Okay, she started by giving me money to go and buy for myself. There is when business started hitting my mind. Okay, there is something to call with money. So this woman noticed me and started coming into my life slowly and slowly and slowly. Helping me. By that time, we didn't know about email. We didn't know about phones. So when they used to come, I go to her. Go to her every time, every time they used to come from Swedish school. So this this is how I met this family and after one year I met another person from Canada from another NGO called Josie Bijron and these people really changed my life they became a family more than even well wishers to me they became my family a solid rock of my entire life up to date they have held me into darkness they have held me into light so when mama tunza took me in she gave me an opportunity a place where to sleep me all, all that and get into school and started learning i'll tell you another story next time so the moral of today is that never give up in life never ever see yourself even if your life doesn't want you there is relatives in other people's who's not even your blood who even your color skin there is some people who are good there's people who will always help you in your life and mold you and become a better person so never ever never ever give up on yourself or anyone around there they are there good people who are going to make you be somebody one day they are ready and god will use them so If you're out there thinking how am I going to make it how I'm going to do it listen to my next episode and you'll know there is no good road to where life is taking you I know life for me life is not yet here there and I'm going to be there don't forget to subscribe see you in the next one